Hi, I'm Dr. Mitchell. I am the uh, senior parathyroid surgeon and the medical director at the Norman Parathyroid Center in Tampa, Florida, and uh, the director of uh, the parathyroid surgery division at our hospital for endocrine surgery. I'm going to share an interesting reoperative surgery case with you today. Um, I started doing this um, in the hopes that uh, people out there who've uh, maybe undergone unsuccessful surgeries and are left not really knowing what to do or, or what to do next um, can realize that there are, there are options for you. Um, I do quite a bit of reoperative cases like this, and 95% uh, of the time, even though they're a lot more difficult, I'm successful in, in uh, curing the patient of their problem. So our case today is a nice gentleman, 71 years old, from uh, New York, actually. This patient was diagnosed with classic primary hyperparathyroidism in 2019. Uh, she was referred for surgery and underwent an operation locally um, in March of that year. Uh, during this operation, both sides of the neck were explored. Preoperative imaging tests uh, suggested a right-sided parathyroid tumor. They interpreted this as a right lower tumor because it was a signal that was low in the neck on the right side. So they started operating on the right side, um, identified a normal looking lower parathyroid gland, and because the imaging test had suggested that this was the problem, they took it out. Um, this was a very small gland that didn't weigh very much, so pretty clearly normal, and I think they knew they hadn't solved the problem uh, because they went to the other side of the neck and took out the left lower parathyroid gland, which also was normal, unfortunately. Now, the surgeon uh, states that they identified both upper glands and that they were normal, but um, as it'll it'll turn out this this was uh, could not have been the case um, after that operation uh, she was not cured unfortunately her calcium and pth remained elevated all that, that that's not really surprising uh, and after surgery there wasn't really a plan put in place for her to to know what to do going forward and after doing some research she found our center and I did a consultation with her we talked about her case at length and uh, she decided to come down here for evaluation so she came to the hospital and we performed our typical uh, or traditional um, imaging that we do. And now based on what happened during her operation and her preoperative imaging, I had a pretty good idea of what happened because I've seen this mistake happen many, many, many times at this point in my career. I suspected that she probably had a right upper parathyroid tumor all along. Uh, just because the signal is low in the neck does not mean it's a lower parathyroid gland. And I see surgeons make this mistake uh, quite often. So uh, she came here and we did our traditional imaging, which I'm going to show you now. Okay, so here we have uh, the results of her system EB scan. This is a nuclear medicine x-ray that we do on all of our parathyroid patients. Um, as you can see, there's not a lot of, of anatomic detail on these imaging tests, but you can get a sense for the shape of this patient's body. We're really trying to interpret different shades of gray or areas of uptake of the tracer that we give these patients. So I'm going to point some things out to you here. This is a, a, a front-on image of the patient, and these dark things up here, kind of in her head, these are, these are submandibular and parotid salivary glands. They also take up this tracer. These dark signals down here, you're looking at the heart and the liver, and here in the neck, this butterfly-shaped uh, area of uptake is the thyroid. The thyroid gland also takes this tracer up. Now, when we do these imaging tests, we, we not only do a, a picture from the front, we also take them from the side. So in this one down here, you can see this patient looks like she's looking off to the left. And uh, here it looks like they're looking off to the right. The reason we do this is the following. Um, if you look at this picture, which is also straight on, you can see that the, it's a bit darker over here. There's a bit more uptake. But when you look at it from the front, it's hard to know if this is just the thyroid gland itself you're seeing or could it be a parathyroid tumor. That's where these oblique images are helpful because when you see that this patient is looking to the left, there's a little bit of this tracer that now points off to the right. Uh, similarly, when she's looking off to the right here, when you look up here, that space between the thyroid lobes is empty, but down here it's now filled up with this dark signal. Uh, that used to be in line with the thyroid. This is very classic for an upper parathyroid tumor, an embryologic upper gland. The reason it moves like this is because uppers are further back in the neck. They're, they're further away from the camera when these images are taken. So when they 
when you when you shift the view they move more than the thyroid does so we can see it move to the left and we can see it move off to the right uh, I'm sorry the other way around to the right and to the left and so when I look at this I know that this is a descended upper parathyroid tumor uh, not a lower and again it's a it's a mistake I see made quite frequently Okay, so here's an example or of one of the images uh, of the ultrasound exam that I performed. And to orient you here a little bit, because it's uh, hard to sort of know what you're looking at, uh, this patient's head is in the screen. Her legs are pointing out towards us like this. So she's the patient's laying like this with her feet towards us, and these are transverse cuts through her neck. We're looking up into her neck from below, essentially, in cross-section. So things you're looking at here, uh, I know you're, you, you probably don't see much of anything, but this area here that's dark is the larynx, or the trachea, I should say, because we're a bit lower. So this is um, trachea, this dark circle is the carotid artery, and this space in between those two things is really the, the money area where, where we look for parathyroids. Now you can see down posteriorly, further back in the neck, uh, this dark structure which is a pretty classic appearance for a parathyroid tumor, okay? Given how far back in the neck it is, this is an embryologic upper gland. As I would mentioned before, they tend to be further back in the neck. So when I see this, it's clear to me this is an upper. Even though it's low in the neck, we're actually below the thyroid. The very bottom of the thyroid is right here. Uh, that's a transverse view. And then here is a longitudinal view where the thyroid gland is on its side now. The head is over towards this side, the feet are down here, and this is the thyroid on its side, and here's this dark mass. And this is not a really unusual place, it's a pretty typical location. Um, it just was missed by an inexperienced surgeon the first time. Okay, so these, uh, these imaging findings confirmed my, my suspicion that I had based on her story and her preoperative imaging studies from her first operation, and we took her to the operating room. and. Uh, because the surgeon wasn't really near this part of uh, her body, it was pretty easy to take this out. It probably took about 10 minutes to operate on her. We took that upper tumor out, and she did really well. Her PTH value that we measured just before surgery was 111. Um, we measured it in the recovery room, and it was 22. Um, so she was cured, very happy. She had a, a quite a few symptoms from her disease, chronic fatigue, insomnia. She couldn't remember things, etc. And all of this resolved for her after surgery. She was quite happy. So here's another example of um, really not a complicated case. Um, this was a relatively straightforward case, um, up, 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 but I guess one of the things I'd like to point out here is um, even here in Florida, um, some of the, the, the doctors that, that, that we work with a lot will um, refer their patients to local surgeons who are not quite as experienced if their imaging tests are positive. But here's a good example of how even with positive imaging tests, inexperienced surgeons can misinterpret them and lead to performing the wrong operation. Um, so I'd consider that when you're thinking about where to get, uh, get your surgery done. And also, if you find yourself out there and you're in a situation like this where you've had an operation that, that wasn't successful, uh, keep in mind that there are options for you. Um, consider giving us a call. I'd love to evaluate your case and talk to you about it, and, and uh, we can almost certainly get you taken care of. Uh, thanks for joining me today. Uh, until next time, have a great day.